Hi everyone, I'm Taylor Springle and I'm one of the admissions counselors here at Kentucky Wesleyan and I am joined by Rebecca McQueen Ruark who is actually our VP of Student Affairs and she's going to be talking about a little bit of campus safety and then some COVID stuff that I'm sure you guys are all wondering about so I'm going to go ahead and introduce her. Hello everybody. So um, I'm just going to be throwing some questions at you today and give us your best thing and of course if you have any feedback let me know. Um, but we're going to start off with our campus security. So do you want to go over a little bit about what all that entails? Yeah, so um, campus security falls under our office and student services. Um, we do have a very safe campus here at Wesleyan. But of course, while it feels like we live in a bubble, we don't. We are part of a larger community. Uh, we uh, have a contracted security service that's here every night um, during the week from 5 p.m. until 6 a.m. Um, and then on the weekends, they're here 24 hours. And so um, they patrol campus. They handle any sort of student issues that happen um, at night and they work very closely with our residence life staff. So there's always a residence director on call and an RA on call um, and to handle any incidents. Um, I'd also say we have a very good working relationship with the Owensboro Police Department. So if the police ever do need to be involved in a situation on campus, I've got their cell phone numbers, I can text them. Um, and for the most part, you can check out all of our safety and security numbers, um, the Clary Report stuff on our website. Um, but we're very fortunate to have very few, if any, incidents every year in regards to safety concerns. Perfect. Now, a big one with that, especially this year, we now have access cards in all of our dorm buildings. So what does that mean for everybody on campus? Yeah, so we're excited about that. Uh, so in the past, when you would check into a residence hall, you would get both a room key and a key to your building. And so um, the building keys are no longer, they are a part of our history. Uh, but this summer we're adding a card access onto every residence hall. So what that means is when the students, um, when you get your student ID, um, which hopefully you've submitted your picture for already, um, but when you get your student ID, when you arrive on campus, uh, you'll just be able to swipe into your residence hall and you'll have access to get in there. Um, that's really helpful for us to be able to track who's coming and going from the buildings. Um, if you're on an athletic team that needs to stay over a break, we're able to limit who has access to the building to just those students who are approved. Um, and it really does add an extra level of security for us here on campus. Awesome. I know that was a big one that we were really excited for this year. Um, but something kind of kind of piggybacking off of that. Now, a big thing is parking on campus. Now, I know we have uh, several commuter students as well as residential students. So how do parking permits work on campus? Okay, so um, as a student who went to a huge university where I wasn't even allowed to drive my freshman year and had to pay hundreds of dollars, that is not the case at Kentucky Wesleyan. So you actually, as a part of your tuition and fees, pay what's called a parking and transportation fee. And so that pays for all of the upkeep and maintenance of our parking lots, but it also pays for a parking permit. You just have to make sure that you register your car. Um, so you should have received that information from admissions. If not, it's also on our website. It's kwc.thepermitstore.com, pretty certain. Um, and so what you need to do is just before you arrive to campus, make sure you go in, um, uh, put in all of your information as far as make, model, license plate, color of your car, and those kind of things. And then when you arrive on campus in your mailbox, you'll get your parking permit. Uh, we do have a little bit of a change in our parking this year. So there will be designated lots for residential students and designated lots for commuter students and faculty and staff. Um, in the past, we had had commuter students complaining about the fact that residential students would drive to their classes from the back of campus, which is really about a three minute walk. Um, and so to make sure that our commuter students have spaces when they arrive to campus, um, the Han Center, I'm pointing at it even though you can't see it, the Han Center lot and then um, the east side of the Sherm lot will be for commuter students and faculty and staff only. So that should help um, your convenience when you're coming to class. And then, like I said, the residential students, you can walk the three to five minutes that it takes to get to class, roll out of bed in the morning. So, yeah. yeah. Especially being a student on campus myself when I was there, um, I can definitely agree with that. It takes maybe three or four minutes, even if you're at the very far dorm buildings, which very far they're not very right. far um you can exactly. see all those right there but that just a little bit of an update for parking for you guys um now we also have um with our ymca we of all of our students have in the past have had a free membership there including in their student fees so mm -hmm. what is that going to look like this year um it'll look the same as it has it always has so any full-time um in-person student so any 
online students unfortunately don't pay that fee but any in-person um, student who's full-time they pay the um, health and wellness fee and so that covers your membership at the Owensboro Family YMCA. Uh, the YMCA is located right across the street across Sherm Road um, and uh, you can even for an additional I think $25 get a 24-hour fob that will allow you in the building. Um, now I know we're going to talk about COVID-19 stuff but I actually met with the YMCA staff today to, to go over what their safety and their protocols are going to be. So um, they have um, some requirements about cleaning the machines and those kind of things, but they're being very safe as well and following all the governor's protocols. So it should be wide open for our students to use like normal. They're even having fitness classes um, and personal training and those kind of things. So you can get your workout on, get fit, whatever. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, um, kind of using that as a segue, I know everybody's favorite topic right now is going over COVID stuff. Yes. yes. Okay, buckle up. Let's get all those questions answered. Okay. Um, so I know, especially being an admissions counselor, dealing with a lot of parents, I get a lot of questions just about precautions in general. Um, so obviously we'll dive a little bit deeper, but what are some of the precautions that our students can expect um, by moving on campus? Okay. Like in the well, I mean, or anything. Yeah, I think the, the most important thing I want everybody to know is that our number one priority is the safety and security um, and health of our students and our faculty and staff. So we're, we have a lot of measures that we're going to be putting in place just to make sure everybody is as safe as possible, while also having the ability to, of course, you know, be educated and earn their degree. Um, hopefully, the actual document that outlines all of our plans will be released um, in the coming week so that people can really, you know, get really down in the dirty details. Um, but uh, we've been meeting all summer. We have a COVID-19 response team that's been meeting um, and we've divided into different committees within that, facilities, uh, athletics, uh, students, safety and security, um, we're all under me. Um, and so we have a lot of things that we're going to be doing. Um, are there specific things that you have questions that we're gonna be? Yes. So how we're going to be addressing it in, in order, but um, so a big one is obviously PPE, so personal protective equipment. So what can our students expect for that? Are masks mandatory? Do they? What's going to happen with that? Um, so when you're on campus, um, in any sort of campus building, um, other than in your residence hall room, you are going to be expected to wear a mask. Um, luckily, the Student Activities Programming, Programming Board has purchased these lovely. Wesleyan mask. Um, every student will receive two of these when they check into campus at the beginning of the school year. Um, they are washable and reusable. Um, we, you know, hope that students are bringing their own mask as well and rotating their mask every day and washing them. Um, but yeah, we are going to require a mask um, on campus and social distancing and those kind of things. Um, SAPB will also be providing every student with a 1.8 ounce um, Wesleyan hand sanitizer. We have hand sanitizer stations that are being added around campus. Um, and then additionally, SAPB and S SAPB and SGA have purchased purple Wesleyan camping chairs or bag chairs is what I've heard people refer to them as. Um, and so every student, every full-time student will receive one of those when they arrive on campus in the fall. And so that will be able to be used for any student activities or events that we have outside. So to encourage some outdoor programming um, and then anything that maybe is in the new church building and those larger spaces, it's sort of like a BYOC, bring your own chair. Um, so that's one less thing that you have to worry about sanitizing or cleaning. You know that you're the only person who's been sitting in your chair. So that's the PPE. Um, and of course, well, and employees, sorry, it's probably, they probably want to know, all employees, faculty, staff are going to be required to wear um, a face mask as well while they're on campus so that everybody can follow the governor's protocols and we can be as safe as possible. We have the same beautiful mask that you guys will get. So we can all do that. Should it be great? I have um, one for like every outfit. I literally have seven different masks sitting on my desk right now. So I, I have a mask purchasing problem right now, but it's fine. So I'm really into tie dye right now. So I want to tie dye some masks. Ooh, stylish. Yes. We should tie dye these like I'm purple. Just saying. Okay. Anyway, we're on. We'll make it an event Sorry. this fall. Don't worry, guys. We're, we'll um, bring our own chair. Okay. We're distracted. Okay. Focus. <laughs> um, but so obviously going and attending classes is, you know, while you're coming to college amongst, of course, the fun things. Um, but so what are classes going to look like? Are they going to be the same? Are they scheduled different? What's going to go um, on? 
There'll be more details forthcoming about people's specific schedules, but I do know that what um, we've decided is that there will be a hybrid learning model. And so uh, your classes will be a mix of in-person and what we're calling technologically enhanced classes or um, remote learning. Um, and so it might be the Taylor, like you and I are in the same Tuesday, Thursday class, but we might not ever actually be in that class physically together. You might go in person on Tuesdays while I'm learning virtually on Tuesdays. And then I would go on Thursdays and you learn virtually on Thursdays. Um, each class is going to be different depending on the size of the class and the location. Um, we have turned our chapel and then Rogers Hall, those are going to be used as classroom spaces as well um, so that um, we can, every student will have, I think it's 36 square feet, so right, like six feet on all sides of them um, for social distancing while in the classroom. So in order to do that, we've had to cut down some class sizes or move some classes to larger spaces. Um, so I would say if a student has more specific questions about their particular class or schedule, I would email those professors directly, or at least wait until all the information comes out and then ask more specific questions later. Yeah. Um, and then something that I thought was really cool is they're going to be doing cleaning in classrooms a little differently. It's going to be yes. like a home gym situation. Yeah. So I was going to say, treat the, treat your classroom like you would the gym. Um, and so it's, you know, like in the gym where you see like those spray bottles and the paper towels to clean off your equipment, all of that kind of stuff is going to be located in the classrooms as well. So we want students to wipe down their workspace before and after they use it. Um, and that's just to be, to take extra precaution and make sure we're being as clean and sanitary as possible um, so that we're not transmitting anything. And hopefully that can put some peace of mind to some of our students that that might be concerned so that you know that you were actively doing it. So maybe a little bit calm the anxiety a little bit of all of that. Yeah, um, and I think it's going to be, you know, I, sorry, uh, I think it's going to be important that everybody really, you know, the Wesleyan way is something that is going to be very important during this time of COVID-19, right? Like, we have to trust that we are all taking care of each other, that, you know, the community and the family aspect that we love here um, is also going to help us to take care of each other and make sure everybody's doing their part to keep everybody else safe. So it's not just about you. You might think you're like a very healthy person who, even if you, you know, were to get COVID-19, you'd be perfectly fine, but it's about taking care of your neighbor or your faculty member who, or who's around you and doing your part. So. Awesome. I totally agree. We're doing everything we can and we kind of expect it back. So, yep. um, but kind of going off of that cleaning aspect, the cleaning in the dorms and other places are going to be kind of doubled in general. So um, what is that going to look like? Yeah. So um, every uh, residence hall bathroom is typically cleaned um, just once a day uh, on weekdays um, during a normal academic year, right? So we're actually going to be doubling that up uh, during the school year. And I know that um, Scott Kramer, who's over our facilities, is talking about what the weekend cleaning schedule is going to be, look, um, what is going to look like. So stay tuned for more details on that. But I know that we are going to be cleaning the restrooms twice a day um, this year, and that's not just in the residence halls, it's also in academic and common buildings. Um, so they'll have that deep clean in the morning and then a sanitation again later in the afternoon. Um, so hopefully, um, and it, they will also have some of the self cleaning supplies in them too. Everywhere is going to be a gym, right? So in addition to the, like, the normal cleaning, there's going to be sanitation. Um, materials uh, in, in those rooms as well. So if somebody just feels more comfortable spraying down something themselves before they use it, they're going to have the ability to do so um, as well. Awesome. Um, so kind of going off of that now, now obviously living on campus means you're going to be doing a lot of eating on campus. Mm -hmm. So what are some differences between the dining hall and what can people expect from that? Okay. Um, sorry, I'm pulling up my notes so I can make sure I don't forget anything. Um, so Hawker Dining Hall, right, is our all-you-can-eat facility upstairs. And as you can imagine, um, buffets are sort of not safe right now. So where in the past, students would normally be able to serve themselves and like pile it up or whatever, you'll still be able to pile up your plate but you won't be the one serving it. So there won't be any self-serve up there anymore. There'll actually be Aladdin, who's our food service provider. Um, they'll have staff members there to, to dip your plates for you um, and to serve you your drinks and those kind of things. Um, and then based on the governor's guidelines of what capacity can be in eating facilities, which right now is 50%. So we would only have um, be able to 
um, allow 50% capacity up there for people to sit. And what we're going to encourage students to sit with people that are in their family units. So for us, a family unit would be people that you either live with um, in your room or on your residence hall floor or somebody who's on your athletic team because those are people that you're already around regularly anyway so we want to treat you like a family um, but to try to limit the people that you're in any sort of close proximity with um, so that's how hawker is going to work um, and then panther cafe and grill which is down here where you can get a lot of the fried things that are like my favorite but not good for me uh, and the starbucks which is definitely my favorite and definitely not good for me uh, It'll just be grab and go. So there won't be any seating down here, but there'll be um, to-go containers. So you can take your food outside in your little purple chair uh, and go sit outside or on the picnic tables. Um, we're gonna try to do um, more off the sidewalk type dining, which um, is normally an event we have in the fall and the spring where we serve food outside. So we're gonna try to have tables, more tables out in front of Winchester Student Center, especially during the lunch hour, so that students can go outside and eat their lunch um, just because it's safer to do so outside. Um, the Panther Pantry 24-hour convenience store will still be fully up and functioning. Um, we're just gonna have to limit the amount of students that are able to be in there. It's a small space, so only be able to be two students in there at a time. They'll be, um, because you have to use your hands to like order on the machine or like to ring up your stuff. They'll be, once again, I keep saying it, the gym set up, students will have to, you know, sanitize that and spray it before they use it hand sanitizer all of those kind of things so awesome. sorry I feel like that was a lot but no, I mean, that's still gonna be able to know yeah um, you'll still be able to eat too. yeah and like you know and DoorDash you know for your late at night food don't worry DoorDash is killing it in Owensboro right now so you'll be able to have all of that delivered Jimmy John's is still delivering um so for your late night snacking if that's what you want yeah plus we'll have that the that's sidewalks true. Fall is the prettiest time on campus ever. So yes. everybody can just take advantage, get some fresh air in between classes, have a little study break. It'd be nice. Yes. Um, but some other services that are also on campus um, for, or maybe some telecounseling services that are going to be offered. How are those going to look like? Yeah, so um, we this will be our third year having a full-time counselor here on campus during the school year, um, Terry Petzold. Uh, she will still be able to meet with students in person if they would like to receive their counseling in person. Um, there'll still be PPE involved. She's going to have a face shield. There'll be social distancing. However, if a student doesn't feel comfortable with that and they would rather meet um, uh, virtually, she has the ability to do telecounseling. And so it would be very similar to this. We'll be able to meet via Zoom. She'll be able to offer her services that way um, and I know she's um, in the spring and over the summer she's been doing some different trainings and things um, to make sure that she is a, as effective as can be with telecounseling. Um, also nurse Tanya um, in our health services so she'll be able to um, do all the normal things that she did. She's going to limit the amount of people who are able to be in person in her office at a time. Luckily she has a very large office space um, but if for some reason, if a student thinks they have um, you know, symptoms or things like that, they'll be able to call her on the phone and then she can come to where they are to be able to diagnose, to limit contact with others um, and those kind of things. So all of those services will still be offered. They might just be tweaked or a little different. Gotcha. Um, so you talked about maybe a student possibly having symptoms down the road. I know it's a case mm -hmm. that none of us want to hope that happens, um, but right. of course we have to be prepared for the worst. So what mm -hmm. does happen if a student is on campus and does test positive? Okay, if a student tests positive, um, our hope is that that student would alert us immediately um, and let us know. So that's going to be a part of that um, responsibility to the community right so we need to we need to know that as soon as possible um, but we also have a very close working relationship with the Green River Valley um, Health Department or Green River District Health Department um, and so the health department would also alert us now it's important to know that because of HIPAA and privacy um, that if Taylor Springle tested positive for COVID-19 while a lot of parents and families would want to know specifically who that student is, we would just be sending out a very general um, message to campus to protect your privacy. There has been a student who has tested positive on campus. Now that student would be providing, um, and we would also help provide that information to the health department of anybody that they would have come in close proximity with. So according to the health department, um, right now their guidelines is that they have to have been within six feet of somebody for at least 15 minutes um, for them to be considered a close contact. So if I just walk past you out here, 
that's not a close contact, but somebody that I've spent, like, spent and expended spent an extended amount of time with would be considered a contact. And so that name would be provided to both the health department and us so that we could do contact tracing. And so if a student is at potential of being, um, have, having been exposed, they would be contacted by the health department and the college. Um, that student who was tested positive, we have quarantine and isolation space. Um, that we've already designated we're saving five units on the top floor of stadium so they would be isolated there and then we would follow the health department's guidelines and suggestions as far as any other students on campus who needed to be quarantined um, or isolated in stadium um, and yeah so those people you know what happens if i'm isolated or quarantined what do i do obviously you're not going to class you're not going anywhere your tail is staying in stadium. Um, we're going to have uh, toiletries for you, bedding, all of that down there. Um, Aladdin, our food service, is going to work with us um, to prepare sick boxes. So um, every day we would drop off like 24 hours supply of food for you to make sure that you have breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, we want to keep you safe and comfortable while keeping the rest of the campus safe. So um, does that answer your question? I feel like that was a lot. No, of course. No, it okay. does. All right. I know it's probably a lot of info. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry, move-in days. I probably should have talked about move-in days. And I apologize for that. Um, so, because I know we've had a lot of questions since housing assignments went out about when will they find out what day they move in. Um, because we're trying to, you know, provide for social distancing and not having a whole bunch of people in the buildings at a time, um, all of our stairwells are going to be one way, either up or down. Um, students will receive by probably the end of next week at the absolute latest, their specific day and time that they are supposed to check in. Um, and the reason that that's taking more time than we would like is that we can't, it would be really easy if we could just say A through C, you move in on this day and time, but we're, we're doing it based on your location on campus because we don't want more than a couple of people on each residence floor moving in at the same time. Um, so I know people want that information as soon as possible. Just stay tuned for that. We're going to get it to you um, in just the next few days so that you can make those plans. Sorry. Perfect. No, oh, you are good. <laughs> um, and if any prospective students that are coming in in the fall have any questions um, regarding any of that, feel free to reach out to your admissions counselor. Um, we know most of all the information. If we don't, we know, if we don't, we know the people who do. Um, so we can always get those for you and hopefully get all of that info out as soon as we know it. Um, mm -hmm. But hopefully that answers some of your questions, concerns, comments about all of the COVID-19 situation. Um, and what we're doing at Wesleyan to kind of help that for you guys. Um, but that's all I have. Becca, do you have anything else you want to throw in? No, we're, we're excited. We know, especially for these incoming freshmen, that your senior year did not end the way that you wanted it to. Um, and college might not be starting the way that you expected it to. Um, but we're going to do everything we can to make sure that you still get a good Wesleyan experience, that you still feel the community and the family here, um, and that you're successful. So we're excited to get everybody back on campus. Know there's going to be some challenges, but um, we're going to get through it together. Yes, it has been way too quiet on campus. We need all of our students back. So loving it up. Um, but thank you guys so much for coming and learning all about Kentucky Wesleyan and what we're doing to help you guys out. If you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out. We'll put our contact info below um, and have a great rest of your day. Bye guys.